Welcome to World Class, the series that brings you the very best of the best. And with that in mind, no, your eyes don't deceive you. You are looking at a barge with a swimming pool. Intrigued? Well, join us later in this program for the grand tour of all 129 feet of this beautiful boat, the Fleur de Lis in Burgundy, France. But first, we start off in the Canal du Midi, in the southwest of France, on board the Alouette, who at just under 100 feet is just a tad more modest. The barges are operated by a float in France, who own five boutique barges in total. Each vessel is uniquely decorated and has its own dedicated crew. And, according to the guests who fall in love with these floating hotels, each boat has its own personality. The Alouette is the only luxury barge in the afloat in France fleet that can navigate the narrow locks of the Canal du Midi. The selection of river and canal routes chosen for these delightful holidays of float pass through some of the finest scenery in France. If you choose to simply lie back, relax, and do absolutely nothing, you will discover that time almost stands still, and yet the panoramic views are constantly changing. The changes are subtle, and each bend in the stream is a revelation. Much of the scenery you travel through has remained unchanged for centuries. This region, the Languedoc Roussillon, is rich with many quaint medieval towns and villages to explore. This is the land of the Cathars, who in the 12th century led very austere lives. Sex and wealth were banned, as was good food and wine. Thankfully, Times have changed with some of the best restaurants and vineyards in France following the route of the Canal du Midi on its journey from the chilly Bay of Biscay to the warm Mediterranean Sea. There is an unbridled display of bespoke furnishings below the sun deck. She was newly refurbished in 2008 to the highest standards. This lounge includes a hi-fi system for your MP3 player internet facilities, and, of course, a plasma TV, along with a substantial DVD library. She is fully air-conditioned and accommodates four passengers in two cabins that are located well above the waterline. The cabins are all en suite, with full-size double beds, giving the rooms a bedroom feel, rather than that of cabins on board a boat. Her sun deck provides the perfect place to relax and enjoy the passing scenery. Actually, the Alouette is the ideal barge for a family holiday. Should you prefer to explore this medieval region from land rather than the river, there really is no better base than the walled city of Carcassonne. This UNESCO-designated World Heritage Site has restaurants, bars, and souvenir shops galore crammed into a maze of winding cobbled streets turrets and towers. Atop the city between two historic landmarks, the Romanesque Chateau Comtal and the Gothic Basilica of Saint Nazaire, stands the only five-star hotel within the walls, the Hotel de la Cité. Set in its own glorious gardens, the hotel prides itself on offering the very best of regional food from its Michelin star restaurant. In early morning, executive chef Jérôme Rion visits the market of Carcassonne to handpick the finest local ingredients for his dishes. He particularly loves the autumn with its array of game, mushrooms, and truffles. The market stalls offer a wonderful array of fruit and vegetables. But today, Jerome is looking for fresh fish for tonight's menu at the Barbican restaurant. Bon. 
Meanwhile, as the sun rises above the turrets of the walled city, the day-trippers are coached in from the equidistant towns of Narbonne and Toulouse. By noon, the narrow walkways, ramparts, and restaurants will bulge to capacity. In the summer months, the tiny alleys become almost impossible to navigate as a frenzy of tourists shop for medieval souvenirs, including gray plastic swords resembling those used by knights, complete with helmets and breastplates for small, overexcited children. For those lucky enough to stay within the walls, the early evening is by far the best time to explore, as the last of the stragglers pack their day bags and get ready for their coach journey back down the auto routes of southern France. It's worth spending a few days in this delightful town. It will take you that long to discover the best of the local restaurants and, of course, to sample the many wines from this region. Inside, the hotel is worth exploring as much as the city itself. Its stained glass windows, irregular stone walls, carved mahogany woodwork, fairy tale corridors, and magical stone spiral staircases are all as intriguing as the historical memorabilia and superb paintings of past medieval life that hang on the walls. Inside, the rooms are spacious and elegant, each individually designed in classic style with views to the ramparts. Some have terraces and balconies, while the lower floor junior suites have private gardens with convenient access to the quiet haven of the hotel's swimming pool. In the kitchen, the chef has returned, armed with fresh herbs picked from the garden and the fish from the market. He's about to prepare one of the most popular dishes on his a la carte menu. Sea bass steak, braised with artichokes, tomatoes and courgette. Juice with olives and basil. Jerome was appointed as executive chef at Hotel de la Cité in February 2006. He was born in the small town of Bourg-en-Bresse, where as a young boy, Jerome recalls enjoying watching his grandmother in her kitchen, preparing some of the regional dishes he is now so fond of. Her inspiration has certainly brought him a long way. In 2008, he and his team were rewarded as the Michelin star was confirmed for his hotel's restaurant. High praise indeed, and his clients would say deservedly so. Here you can sample some of the best wines that France can offer. But it's a little-known fact that in the 16th century, a monk from the Abbey of St. Hilaire, just eight miles south of Carcassonne, discovered that his carefully corked bottles of wines had become effervescent. And so, the very first bottle of bubbly was born. You can still taste this famous wine, the Blanquette de Limoux, produced in exactly the same way, but less accidentally. After a fine meal, why not sample the other fine French products next to the log fire? Cognac or Calvados? A perfect finish to a perfect day. Moving on and back afloat to another great wine-producing region of France, Burgundy. And this has to be the best way to explore the many towns and vineyards that are so recognizable from any respectable restaurant's wine list. Meursault, Saintenay, Mercure, Volnay, Bon, to name but a few, all nestled among the famous Rue du Vin. If you need to unwind, this is the perfect holiday, as our skipper, Jay, explains. 
No, it is a relaxing place and you'll, you'll see the speed that we go down the canal. We have passengers who arrive and they want, right, we want breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning and then after the second day they're getting up at 10 o'clock, they're lounging around in their, their pyjamas and their dressing gowns and by the end of the week they're completely de-stressed, completely relaxed. It's definitely the way to do it. When they first get on board they can't believe the size of the, the barge actually. I mean, especially if you come from England, you, you presume a barge to be one of the narrow boats and they come on and they see the size of the cabins, they see the layout of the boats and the Fleur de Lis especially, it's, it's quite a quirky boat. There's a lot of antiques from Eastern Bloc countries. Uh, they don't realize how deep the pool is. They, they think it's just gonna be a paddling pool and then they see it's actually two and a half meters deep. And uh, yeah, it's always a shock. But then within 10 minutes, they're settled in with a glass of champagne and it's just like a home from home. A home from home indeed, especially with cabins like these rivaling the rooms of most land-based five-star hotels. The two barges that operate mostly in Burgundy are the Fleur de Lis and the Amaryllis, both impeccably appointed with gracious elegance and amenities which simply epitomize the concept of luxury travel, with double state rooms, canopied beds, and of course, ensuite bathrooms. At 129 feet, both sleep eight guests with plenty of room for comfort. So much so that each barge has a separate dining room with a table laid for delicious five-course candlelit dinners cooked and served by the crew in elegant surroundings. The thing the passengers, I think, like about it is how peaceful and how uh, slow and tranquil the whole experience is. They come on the boats, they've got busy lifestyles, everything's very quick, they arrive, and within a day, a day and a half, they slow down. They have no choice. The boat moves at five kilometres an hour, which is about walking pace. Um, the good thing about it for our passengers is that we have so many locks, they can get on and off, half a kilometre maybe in between, they can get off, walk alongside the boat, get back on at the next lock. So there's no real pressure on them to exert themselves too much. They exert themselves to the amount that they can afford to. So they'll get on at the next lock, sit, relax, have a few drinks, maybe get off, walk again at the next one. We've got bikes on board so they can cycle next to the barge. But the incredible thing about it is that because we go so slow, you can see something in the distance, you can study it, it's right next to the barge and you've got plenty of time to look at it, speak about it, get binoculars out, look at it. You see a lot more of France than you probably would uh, doing any other form of transport, really, not trains, not cars. It's a bit like hiking, but cheating, because you're floating about in a five-star hotel, really. There are, of course, some exciting moments along the way. Yeah, locks are fun, and uh, you don't realise the, the size of them until the boat comes in. They're not easy, but uh, one thing we try and do is we strive to get the boat in without touching in every lock, and uh, obviously sometimes we, we don't achieve that, but you're always going for that perfection. At the front of the boat we have a flagpole in the dead centre and we know that that's roughly where the middle of the boat is. And we also have two mirrors which look down the sides of the boat. And as we come into the lock we use the flagpole against the lock doors to get a rough centre point. And then from about 10 metres out it's all to do with lining up with the mirrors. So your head is constantly going from left to right to left to right and then you're trying to coordinate your arms as well with that. You've got the guy at the front who is normally a matelow, but in my case it's Callum who's another pilot. He's giving me meters to the lock, so you, you, you're taking all this in. And you're also trying to, you, you're watching the way the boat's reacting to the wind. If you're on the river, you're watching to the way it's reacting to the current. You, you have to take everything in. And uh, it's a lot of it is last minute, split section reactions to, to what goes on. So we're looking at maybe two to three inches on the sides. And then we stop as close to the gates as we can get because we have to get in at the back. We have to tuck the rudder in at the back just to get fit in the lock. The locks are something like 39 metres and we're 38.6, it's something like that. The 
number of crew depends on the barge you choose, but they all provide a pilot responsible for navigation, a chef to cater to your culinary delights, a hostess who will make sure your time on board is totally relaxed, and a guide whose knowledge of your cruising area is unsurpassed. For wineries and chateaus in Burgundy. And, um... This elegant and magnificent castle that once housed Marguerite de Bourgon, the Queen of France, has been boldly clinging to the cliff just a few miles from the town Couchet for 10 centuries. The Chateau de Couchet, directly translated, means Castle of Layers so-called because of the many stages of development and expansion it underwent through the 11th and 12th centuries. This fortress stands as an excellent example of the level of protection that French elite and royalty needed in those turbulent days. Today, though, it simply provides a perfect backdrop to sit, relax, and perhaps reflect on how times have changed. While you're out enjoying the French countryside and chateau tours, the crew never stops working. They serve three main meals a day, which calls for a lot of supplies. We are in Dijon, the capital of Burgundy, and as Chef Jerome did in Carcassonne, the chef of the Fleur de Lis is on the lookout in the local market for the fresh regional produce to delight her guests. A favorite course to end any evening in France is cheese, and here there is a vast selection. Ah, exceptional. So good. Of course, only the very best of ingredients will do. On dry land, the tours continue. These massive cellars with their magnificent Gothic architecture belong to the wine producer Joseph Druhen and lay beneath the town of Bohm. They are classified as historical treasures, with the oldest parts of the cellars dating back to the 13th century, while the newest wing was built as a wine cellar for the kings of France in the 16th century. I wouldn't be surprised it would refold somehow, maybe in a year or two, not showing that, that fascinating, and after that it will reopen. These are wonderful places to expand your education on the complexities of wine. Fortunately, there are many experts on hand. But even so, it remains impossible to learn all of the secrets of the grape in a human lifetime. You got to know what you know, and you got to know what you ignore. That's it. The main thing is to be humble and to worship this and say, what a wonderful gift from Mother Nature. For we are there simply to reveal the picture. But everything was inscribed in the grape. The Pinot Noir remains a blotting paper, you know. <laughs> I believe in that. As long as I will keep this notion in mind, well, let's say, I will try to be a honest uh, steward to that. Huh? An honest steward, and clearly very oh, modest. No. It's already very palatable. There is so much to learn about this region, and the crew are always on hand to help. Okay, so if you look over there, that's a grey heron. Absolutely fabulous. These are uh, some of the most common birds you'll see uh, along the sides of the canal. Normally they have a territory of about half a kilometre all the way along. The sneakiest of the grey herons have got their territory next to uh, locks, because when the lock drops, the small fish get caught in the locked doors and they pick them out. Uh, also, you'll see buzzards, which is a bird of prey, but there's lots of wildlife all around. So guests can simply cruise an ocean of gently rolling hills and thickly wooded valleys. They can enjoy landscapes where vineyards climb gently into misty mornings and spend the day whispering through waters filled with emerald reflections. At the same time, they can take a swim in waters filled with the crisp blue sparkle that only a well-kept pool can offer. A 
a little exercise is good to balance the many meals that are available during the day. The food served on board and the accompanying wine could perhaps be described as the most sensual part of your holiday. Each meal will reflect your journey through a land of farms, orchards, vineyards, and markets. Ah, time to discover a little more about the fresh cheese that Chef bought earlier today. The markets has a lovely nutty flavor and it's got this beautiful, sort of almost elastically, elastic-y, holy pat. And then moving on to Long, that comes from Champagne. And it's a cheese that was introduced by the monks when they passed through that region in the Middle Ages. Lectures on wildlife and cheese are available upon request. Should you prefer, you could of course simply lie back, relax, and do absolutely nothing. You may discover that time almost stands still, and yet the panoramic views are constantly changing. The changes are so subtle, and yet each bend in the stream offers a new revelation. Could this be the most relaxing break ever? That's for you to discover. Well, sadly, that's all we have time for. But we hope you agree that these delightful barges floating through the finest scenery in France with such professional crews on board truly do offer a world-class vacation experience. So be sure to tune in again and travel in style with us as we endeavor to find the very best in luxury accommodation from around the globe.